All of the data from 227 observatories on Earth shows no deviation from a trajectory shaped by gravity alone. Just a few days ago, I realized that back on August 15th, 1977, there was a very famous radio signal that was given the name the WOW signal. And I checked it. Turns out that it came from about the same direction in the sky as 3i Atlas. And the chance for a random alignment is 0.6%. I decided to submit a white paper to the United Nations calling for the creation of a committee that will analyze what we know about interstellar objects because we have to be prepared for a black swan event. Whether we have a neighbor, whether we are being visited by alien technology, these facts would not depend on what we say about them. We can ignore them and sleep well, that's fine. I'm suggesting that we should be aware of that possibility because we launch technological gadgets out of the solar system. The headline isn't that 3i Atlas is here, it's what it's doing. The light it throws back is polarized the wrong way. Spectra whisper nickel from a coma so cold, metals shouldn't escape. And Avi Loeb wants a UN-level investigation. Earth is sun-blinded, only Mars has the angle. The next data either kills the anomaly or blows it wide open. So what is 3i Atlas actually telling us? If rigorous, source-driven space reporting matters to you, support this channel now by subscribing and leaving a like. Astronomers first flagged 3i Atlas in early July when the Atlas survey picked up an object moving too fast and on a hyperbolic path, a signature of origin beyond the sun's gravity well. Follow-up confirmed outgassing, so it is a comet, not a bare asteroid, and that activity makes it luminous and informative. For a while, the story was straightforward. A large energetic interstellar comet would arc inward, peak in activity near the sun, and then be flung back to the dark. Then the viewing geometry turned against Earth. The comet slid behind the solar glare, and optical data from the ground went quiet just as interest spiked. Reports note that it has been traveling markedly faster than the first two interstellar visitors we've seen, which tracks with its different trajectory through the inner system. Water and carbon dioxide appear to be venting, carving a diffuse coma and a long tail. There are hints the object may even have been brushed by solar outbursts on its way sunward, further complicating the view from Earth. None of that implies danger here at home. It simply means prime measurements must come from elsewhere while the sun blocks our line of sight. Avi Loeb argues that interstellar intruders deserve more than scattered observations and short press releases. He wants a global framework, even a United Nations level process, to coordinate data and think through scenarios in which some visitors might be technological. It is not a claim of certainty. It is a claim that preparation is rational when the potential stakes are planetary. In recent interviews, he has urged radio astronomers to listen methodically while Atlas is in range, and he has even asked the community to revisit famous puzzles with fresh timing checks as this object sweeps by. His point is simple. A rare messenger should trigger mature, shared protocols rather than ad hoc reactions. Observers noted that Atlas is racing through the inner system significantly faster than the first two interstellar visitors, an expected result of its different origin and trajectory. Water ice and carbon dioxide are venting, sculpting a broad coma and a delicate tail. Then, just as curiosity spiked, the comet slipped behind the sun from Earth's perspective and even may have been brushed by a solar outburst, making optical tracking from the ground impractical until it emerges again. If you want follow-ups the moment new measurements drop from Mars orbit or ground arrays, turn on notifications. Comment with the one clue you think will crack the case first, the nickel chemistry or the polarization curve. Loeb has also floated a provocative test for radio astronomers, asking whether targeted listening could catch any unusual transmissions as Atlas sweeps past. He even raised the historical curiosity of the WOW signal from the 1970s as an example of the kind of puzzle that deserves fresh scrutiny. That suggestion is not evidence, it is an invitation to measure boldly and interpret cautiously. His framing is less about fear and more about playbooks. When a rare messenger from another system rushes through, coordinated archives, time-critical telescope schedules, and shared standards make the difference between speculation and science. A UN-anchored process would not decide what 3i Atlas is, it would decide how the world collects, secures, and shares the data needed to find out. The same machinery would also apply to mundane but urgent questions, 
from tracking debris that might threaten satellites to preserving raw data for future reanalysis when new techniques emerge. Here is the hard data that has Loeb animated. High-resolution spectra from the Very Large Telescope in Chile using the UVES instrument tracked nickel and iron in the gas around the comet across several observing windows. Nickel shows up consistently even when the comet is still more than three astronomical units from the Sun. Iron appears only when the comet moves closer than roughly 2.6 astronomical units. The derived nickel to iron ratio sits far above what is typical in ordinary comets and in the second interstellar visitor we studied. The observers describe the presence of both atoms at these distances as extremely puzzling because the coma should be too cold to vaporize silicates, sulfides, or metallic grains that host such metals. They also noted that Atlas seems depleted in certain carbon-bearing molecules, adding another odd wrinkle to its chemistry. None of that proves anything exotic. It does, however, demand laboratory follow-up and better modeling of grain coatings, grain fragmentation, and the ways sunlight and micro-impacts can liberate atoms from complex mixtures. Independent teams have measured how sunlight scattered by the comet's dust is polarized, and they found a profile with a deep, narrow negative branch at very small phase angles. The minimum sits near minus 2.77%, with the nadir at approximately 6 degrees and the inversion angle around 17 degrees. Those numbers may sound abstract, but they matter. Comets in our catalogs tend to fall into two broad polarization families, high and low, with a couple of famous outliers. 3i Atlas does not fit either family. In some ways, its behavior echoes the surfaces of trans-Neptunian objects or rare asteroids rather than typical active comets, yet this object is undeniably active. That combination of active coma and unfamiliar polarization suggests we are seeing dust with unusual size distributions, porosity, or surface textures that were baked into the grains in a different stellar nursery and then carried across interstellar space. If confirmed across more angles, this would expand the library of how alien dust scatters light and could force a recalibration of the assumptions that underlie standard comet classes. While Earth is star-blinded, orbiters around Mars have a clean shot. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter carries the high-rise camera, capable of resolving features on the order of tens of kilometers per pixel at the planned geometry. Mars Express and ExoMars can contribute too. Loeb points out that Hubble's best image back in late July came from much farther away, so the Mars window should sharpen estimates of the nucleus size, the dust production rate, and the structure of the coma. If the nucleus is smaller than the brightest models implied, some dramatic mass estimates will come down to Earth. If it proves larger and more structured, we will need to revisit how we think interstellar comets store and release volatiles. Either way, measurements from Mars orbit are the fastest way to break degeneracies created by Earth's current blind spot. Anomalies invite better measurements, not hasty conclusions. Nature still offers credible pathways. Micro-impacts can flash heat grains in the coma. Porous, fragile aggregates can trap volatile coatings that release embedded atoms without wholesale sublimation of rocky hosts. Photochemistry can shred unusual compounds in an interstellar mix we have never sampled. The polarization curve could stem from dust with unfamiliar size distributions, extreme porosity, or surface textures inherited from a different natal environment. The point is not to force a verdict. It is to design tests that can actually discriminate between possibilities as new data arrive. Discovery intersects policy. A startling visitor touches planetary, defense protocols, and even insurance modeling. Analysts note that carriers openly model megaquakes and rare floods while saying little about space event scenarios. 3i Atlas itself poses no danger to Earth, yet it is a timely reminder that preparedness and transparency matter long before a real threat appears. As perihelion approaches in late October, activity should spike. Earth is poorly placed right at the peak, but the post-perihelion return to view will bring crucial follow-ups. If the deep negative polarization holds across more angles, 
Dust models must stretch. If spectra keep showing strong nickel where iron stays muted, laboratory work will chase new chemical pathways. If both signals fade with geometry, the anomaly may be transient. Either way, the next datasets will tighten the case and prune speculation. Atlas is a gift from another star. It might be a familiar kind of gift wrapped in unfamiliar paper, or it might force a rethink of how comets grow, fracture, and shed their skins. Loeb's core point is sound. Be organized, curious, and fast when interstellar messengers appear. That is not alarmism. That is stewardship. If you want to see where this story lands, add your voice below, subscribe, and keep the conversation evidence first as new data arrives today.